Welcome to the second edition of our Engagement Studio vlog series. If you're new to the series, my name is Guido and I'm an account strategist at Smartaker, a lead and demand generation agency. In today's episode, I'll be going over actions, triggers, and rules while building a simple Engagement Studio program. I'll start off with actions, which allow you to do something in Engagement Studio. To create an action, you'll click on this little plus sign and select action. This will pull up a list of available actions, including send an email, assign a prospect to a user, add a prospect to a list, change a prospect field value, and so on. So let's say you want to use an action to send an email. First, select send an email, and then choose the email template you want to use. You'll then be asked to select when you want this action to take place. In this example, let's pretend you want to wait three days before sending the email out. Now that the wait step is in place, click save, and your action has been added. Pretty simple, right? Now that we have our action set up, let's add a trigger. To add a trigger, we'll have to click on the little plus sign beneath our action and select trigger. This will enable us to listen for something. For example, has the file been downloaded, has an email been clicked, or has a form been completed? In this case, let's say we want to see if the email that we sent has been clicked. We can choose to see if any link has been clicked or if a specific link has been clicked. This is great because if one link is more important than the rest, like a CTA, we can build the rest of our program based on this trigger. Before finishing our trigger, we have to choose when we want it to be evaluated. You can evaluate triggers up to a maximum number of days or after a set wait period. If we choose the up to option, this means that someone will move to the next step in our program immediately after clicking in our email or once the maximum number of days has passed. This is very powerful because as a marketer, it allows us to accelerate prospects through the funnel as they complete the actions we want them to. On the other hand, if we choose to wait, then none of the prospects will move to the next step in the program until after the wait period is over, no matter how soon they click. This can also be helpful. There are instances when it's better to avoid inundating prospects with marketing materials in quick succession. In this case, let's choose to evaluate up to a maximum of two days. Click Save, and our trigger is added. Now that we have both an action and trigger built in our program, let's add a rule. Rules allow us to check for something, like a prospect's grade, list membership, campaign, or score. So let's say at this point in our nurture, we want to notify the assigned user immediately if someone has clicked in the email and their grade is greater than a B. First, we'll add a rule, choose grade, is greater than B. We will evaluate this rule immediately and save it. Then we'll add an action for any prospect who meets this criteria. So add an action on the right hand path, select notify user, then choose assigned user. Immediately is pre-selected so we can just save our action and we're done. So there you have it, a pretty simple engagement studio program utilizing actions, triggers, and rules. By using these tools in conjunction, you can guide a prospect through the entire customer journey while identifying and passing off qualified leads to the sales team. I hope this episode gave you some ideas that you can apply to your marketing efforts, but if you want to learn more about Engagement Studio, please check out our blog post, Five Ways Engagement Studio Will Impact Your B2B Marketing, or visit GetSmartAcre.com.